Picture a right angle triangle with a fixed hypotenuse of one unit. We'll call the vertical side the opposite, since it's opposite to our angle, and the horizontal side the adjacent, since it's adjacent to our angle. Now watch what happens as I change the angle of this triangle. You can clearly see that there is some relationship between the sides of the triangle and the angle. As you go from 0 to 90 degrees, the horizontal side shortens in length from 1 to 0, while the vertical side increases in length from 0 to 1. But what would happen if our triangle was bigger? Let's observe a triangle twice as big. Do you notice that the proportions of the sides are the same as you increase the angle? So how can we mathematically define this proportion? Well, proportions are all about ratios. The hip to waist ratio divides the waist size by the hip size. The ratio of flour to water in pizza dough divides the mass of flour by the mass of water. So obviously for our right angle triangle ratio, we divide the lengths of the triangle sides. But which of these three lengths do we specifically use? It was around 500 AD that the first official ratio was developed by Indian mathematician Aryabhata, the sine ratio. This measured the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. With this, he constructed a table measuring each ratio of each degree. In modern times, you can simply press the sine function in your calculator and input your angle, rather than referring to a lengthy table of angles and ratios. Aryabhata also developed the table of cosine ratios, measuring the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. It was not until around 800 AD that Persian polymath Al Khwarizmi developed the table of tangent ratios, measuring the ratio between the opposite and adjacent sides. You can use the acronym SO KARTOA to remember the ratios. But how do these ratios apply to any right angle triangle, no matter what size? The beauty about ratios is that it neglects size. For example, in a triangle where the sine ratio is 1 over 2, a triangle twice as big will possess the ratio 2 over 4, which simplifies to 1 over 2. Let's dive into some practice questions using our ratios. What is the ratio of sine 0 degrees? Inputting this into your calculator, you should find that sine 0 is equal to 0. This makes sense, since at 0 degrees, the opposite will be 0 units long, while the hypotenuse is 1 unit long. What about cosine 60? If you input cos 60 into your calculator, you should get 1 over 2. This ratio is a little less visually intuitive, but the human eye isn't perfect, so sometimes it's better to rely on calculators. What is the ratio of 1045? The value of 1045, if you put it into your calculator, should be equal to 1. This is because at 45 degrees, both the opposite and the adjacent sides are equal to each other. While that was relatively simple, these fundamental skills pave a path to answering harder questions. Let's move on to a slightly harder question. A right angle triangle with an elevation angle of 30 degrees has an opposite side of 10 meters. Find the other two sides of the triangle. Let's start by finding the hypotenuse. By recalling so Kartoa, we know that the sine ratio divides the opposite by the hypotenuse. For our triangle, the ratio of sine 30 degrees should be 10 over the hypotenuse. Interestingly, if we put sine 30 into our calculator, we get 1 over 2. Since the ratios should be the same, we can equate 10 over h with 1 over 2 to solve for h. Rearranging and solving, we find that our hypotenuse is 20 meters. Now by using Pythagoras' theorem, we can deduce that a squared plus 10 squared is equal to 20 squared, which simplifies to a squared plus 100 equals 400. By subtracting both sides by 100, we get a squared is equal to 300. Let's take the square root of both sides to get a equals square root of 300, which simplifies to 10 root 3. While we've already solved the question, 
let's find the exact value of cosine 30 from this triangle. Cosine 30 is equal to 10 root 3 over 20, which simplifies to root 3 over 2. This is a perfect segue for exact value tables. In trigonometry, ratios can get quite messy. We aren't going to write down all of these decimals, so we round them to a few decimal places. However, some angles yield ratios in which we can determine the exact value of. In high school, you are expected to remember the exact values of sine, cos, and tan at 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Let's discover them. We already know that the exact value of sine 30 is 1 over 2, and cos 30 is root 3 on 2. We can fix these values onto a right angle triangle where the hypotenuse is 2, the opposite is 1, and the adjacent is root 3. By taking the opposite of the adjacent, we find that tan 30 is equal to 1 over root 3. Let's move on to the 45 degree ratios. We know that tan 45 is equal to 1, meaning the opposite of the adjacent is equal to 1. And if we times both sides by the adjacent, then we get the equation opposite is equal to adjacent. If we let our opposite and adjacent equal to 1, by Pythagoras' theorem we can see that the hypotenuse is root 2. Now we can solve for sine 45 and cos 45, which both should be 1 over root 2. Finally, let's do the 60 degree ratios. We already know that the exact value of cos 60 is 1 over 2. Fixing this onto a right angle triangle, and by using Pythagoras, we can determine that the opposite side is root 3. This now means that sine 60 is root 3 on 2, and tan 60 is root 3 on 1, which is just root 3. If you haven't discovered by now, tan theta is actually equal to sine theta over cos theta. Let's prove this. The sine ratio measures opposite over hypotenuse, while cosine measures adjacent over hypotenuse. If we divide these two and simplify, we end up getting opposite over the adjacent, which is exactly what the tangent ratio measures. Therefore, tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Let's try a practice problem of this ratio. Prove that sine theta over tan theta equals cos theta. The left hand side can be redefined as sine theta divided by sine theta over cos theta. If you rearrange the left hand side you get sine theta times cos theta over sine theta. The sine thetas end up cancelling out, so you get cos theta, which is equal to the right hand side. Let's talk about inverse trig functions. You might have seen these functions. Now despite there being two names for each, they are exactly the same thing. These functions do the opposite of what our original functions are meant for. While our original trig functions use the angles to determine the sides, the inverse trig function uses the sides to determine the angle. Let's use an example. If sine 30 equals 1 over 2, then inverse sine of 1 over 2 equals 30. Let's try this question. If cos theta equals 1 over root 2, find theta. By using our inverse cos function, we can deduce that theta is equal to inverse cos 1 over root 2. If we were in old times, we would use our table of cosines to determine the angle. But we can input inverse cosine 1 on root 2 into our calculators to find the exact angle instead. Our answer should be theta equals 45 degrees. Let's try another question. A right angled triangle has an opposite side of length 5 and a hypotenuse of 8. Find the angle theta. The ratio that involves both the opposite and the hypotenuse is the sine ratio. We can write the following equation. Sine theta equals 5 over 8. This means that inverse sine of 5 over 8 equals theta. And by plugging this into our calculator, we should find that theta is equal to 38.68 degrees to two decimal places. Now it's perfectly normal that we don't get a neat value for our degrees. It happens more often than not in trigonometry. Please note that inverse sine is not the same as one over sine. It is simply a way of representing the inverse function, not the reciprocal. Reciprocals are completely different, and they're also a thing in trigonometry. Reciprocal functions are what happens when you flip a function. 
So the reciprocal function of sine is one of a sine, cosine is one of a cosine, and tangent is one of a tangent. Now these reciprocal functions have specific names. One over sine theta is equal to cosec theta. Cosec is short for cosecant. One over cos theta is equal to sec theta. Sec is short for secant. One over tan theta is equal to cot theta, which is short for cotangent. While these names do have meaning, it isn't necessary to uncover it in the Australian curriculum. A great way of remembering the reciprocals is by taking the third letter of each function. Let's do some practice questions with these. Find cosec 30. Cosec 30 is equal to one over sine 30, which is equal to one over one over two. Using the flip method, we know that one over one over two is equal to two. Therefore, cosec theta is equal to two. Find sec 45. Sec 45 is equal to one over cosine 45, which is equal to one over one over root two. Again, using the flip method, we know that one over one over root two is equal to root two. Therefore, sec 45 equals to root two. Find cot 60. Cot 60 is equal to one over tan 60, which is equal to one over root three. And that's essentially the basics of reciprocal functions, but they do have different uses that we'll cover in another video. Up to this point, we've been viewing trigonometry as a tool simply for right angle triangles. All it does is tell us how the sides correspond to the angles between zero to 90 degrees. So with this restricted definition, all of trigonometry collapses as soon as you go above 90 degrees. But what if I told you there was a solution for this? What if I told you we just need to redefine trigonometry? What if I told you it'll start with a circle? Picture a unit circle on a Cartesian plane. If you take any point on the circle, how could you describe the x and y coordinates? Well, if you haven't realized already, we can define this point as having a length of x and a height of y, which sketches a right angled triangle. Let's call our unknown angle theta. From our ratios, we know that sine theta is equal to y over one, which is just y and cosine theta is equal to x over one, which is just x. So technically, we can redefine our coordinates x and y as cosine theta and sine theta. This is where trigonometry finds a new meaning. So as theta goes past 90, we finally have a visual understanding of what our trig functions holistically represent all the way to 360 degrees and even beyond. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications as in the next trigonometry video, we'll cover solving trig equations, identities, trig polynomials, and more. Bye for now.